discussing VW disc brake conversions. Well, let's get to the tips. I'll see you back at the shop. Originally, this was a 1961 chassis. Uh, years back, I purchased a 73 Super Beetle. It had drum brakes on it all the way around. And what I did was I cut the front and the rear off the car and put them on this 1961 center section is all that's original from the 61 now. Now, so you fully understand the brake system on your car, what I'd like to do here is show you this bottle jack. Let's compare this to your brake system on your car. So we're going to call this your master cylinder and your brake pedal here. And the size of the piston inside the bore of these is what determines the amount of force you can generate. If you go to a bottle jack this size here, the piston is much larger. Same with your brakes. The bigger the caliper piston, the more clamp force you can exert on the pads. Originally I purchased an aftermarket disc brake conversion kit. Uh, everything was good except for I really didn't care for the calipers. I'll show you why. The piston in the aftermarket one is only 31 millimeter. So what I did is I went to a 2000 to 2006 VW Golf. They have a 38 millimeter piston in them and much more clamp force. This is where the emergency brake come through on this caliper too. It kind of comes over the top of your axle then. I really didn't care for that either, so the one that I chose here goes around and underneath and you can roll it real nice. The rebuilt caliper that I chose here comes with the bracket and the bracket has to be modified. You got to grind 250 thousandths off of this and then you can fit it onto that aftermarket kit and still use your rotor and your bracket here. Also this bracket uh, you got to egg the holes just slightly and I actually filled them back in a little bit with a welder even. One other thing I'd like to point out, this bracket that came with the kit here, uh, I believe they have a cast and the stamped. This would be the stamped one, just so you know that. And I thought maybe you'd want a little more of a better view of the whole deal here. A ah, quick little note, where the caliper bracket had to be milled here, uh, knowing you, some of you folks are creative, you could probably even just cut this metal bracket here, extend it out another quarter of an inch, just keep checking it and weld it up, that would work just fine too. One other problem you're going to encounter with doing this conversion with this caliper is the emergency brake fork here is too wide for this ball on the factory VW cable. So you're going to have to compress this a little bit together here more and then you'll be all set. show you that's how good them golf calipers work uh, for the parking brake. The aftermarket ones, uh, they didn't score so well in my mind. Uh, they had trouble. Loose gravel and grass, that's about all I can lock on. It's nice to know that if you never need your parking brake to stop you, you'd have that too. Get your pause button ready. Here's the part number for them rear calipers in case you're interested. the wildlife. The master cylinder I'm using is for the 73 Super Beetle uh, with drum brakes. I believe it's a 19 millimeter bore. You can get different ones with different size bores. Just remember if you go up in size in the bore it will be less pedal travel but it will take more pedal effort to stop the vehicle. Here's a neat little tip everybody should know about. Underneath here, I have a portioning valve. Now with this, I can adjust the front to rear bias from under the dash anytime I want to. And look at this, a part number. And if we go under the dash, there you go. Right here, I have a valve right by the foot controls. You can reach it right from the driver's seat. If you want more front or rear brake, you can fine tune the system and get your brake bias front to rear like perfect. This here is a two pound radigual valve. 
I'm using this only on the front brakes. Uh, what this does is helps keep the pedal tight and on the top of the travel. You do not need this for the rear disc on this application. For the front brakes, I'm using aftermarket calipers and rotors and very nice stuff. I couldn't be any happier. They work great. Last but not least, stainless steel brake lines. When you have a brake line that's this long and that small, when you step on a pedal, it's going to feel squishy if they're just the regular rubber hose. The stainless steel brake lines, yes, guarantee you will feel a difference in your pedal. Well, I hope this video helps you out on your brake project. It's always nice to avoid the I wish I would have. Sometimes it can definitely cost you a lot of extra money. I put a neat little uh, bonus flick on the end of the video here. You might want to see. And if this video helps you out, can you click the like button? I really appreciate that. Thank you for watching. Save the rest for the next video. Bye bye.